Hey, everybody. This is Alex Bennett, and uh, this is our little pop-up show that we do. Uh, you know, did we just do it for fun on Mondays? And uh, uh, nothing much to know except that if you go to our Facebook page, which is uh, facebook.com forward slash A Bennett, uh, you will find a link to this program. Okay so that you can call in and join it. Or you can go over to gabnet.net. That's gabnet.net. There's a column on the right-hand side of the page. In the middle of that column, it says here, when we're on the air, you can Zoom us, click here. You click there, and it's all very simple. You don't even have to have Zoom installed on your computer, although most people do these days. Uh, but uh, would love to have you call. Love to have you join us like these people are going to now. Uh, uh, we see there's Rick. Hello, Rick. How are you? I am very good, Ben. How are you? I'm fine. And, uh, hello, Adrian's dad. <laughs> hello. Brian Neary. And of course, Andrew Deutsch. And hopefully we'll be joined by some other people as we go on, uh, this hour. I hear a rumor Tony might show up. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, I, shall I accept him when he calls? No. I'm not sure, but I guess you have to. Well, make up your mind now. Oh, put him in if he calls in. <laughs> Let's vote. Let's vote. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but he was cooking. He was cooking. Oh, boy. Yeah. <laughs> as long as he doesn't have a fly on his head. So Marjorie <laughs> won't be here today because right now she has a tube up her ass. Oh, that's right. Oh, colonoscopy day. Yeah, colonoscopy day. And she she had to drink the gruel last night, and then she was on the toilet. <clears throat> and it's funny because this is something I had to do every time I had radiation. Okay, so every morning I would have to wake up and drink some of this stuff and do the whole thing and go you know go through the. Uh, oh, actually, I think it. I got down to the point where all I had to use was a fleet enema every day, that I went to go get my radiation. And, and what was ridiculous about that is, imagine waking up in the morning and the first thing you have to do is give yourself a fleet enema, you know? Did you get How those at Costco? <laughs> hmm? Did you get those How at Costco? It? I got them at Costco because you can get like a hundred of them. A hundred of them, right? Yeah, there you go. For three cents, yeah. You ever notice how they don't have a competitor? And then the medic that other crap, so to speak. <laughs> What do you mean the other crap? The stuff you take for the colonoscopy. How is an enema different? Well, uh, uh, not well. It is different in that it, it only takes care of a certain area of your. Oh, okay. Body. The uh, the other stuff cleans you out completely. Cleans out the entire whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, when you're through, you don't have anything left in your colon if if you've done it right, you know. Okay. I think the reason is the doctor doesn't want to go there and find poo. Okay. Yeah. I think it's more for the doctor than it is for me. They're, they're afraid they'll make your poo radioactive and it'll end up creating some horrible superhero. Yeah. <laughs> so I've been, I've been, I've, last couple of days, I've been using the, uh, the Peloton. Mm, good. Uh, doing 25 minutes on the Peloton. Good. And, How do you feel? Well... Yesterday, while I was doing, I got lightheaded, and today I was fine. I didn't get lightheaded while I was doing it, but then when I got off, I was lightheaded. So I don't know. Is that supposed to be? Um, you have stay an off then. Huh? Don't get off it. D don't get off. Just keep pedaling. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, just, that seems to make sense. If you haven't exercised in a while, that's normal. Is, is it really to be lightheaded? Sure, you get your circulating blood in a way you haven't done it in a long time. Yeah, get more oxygen in your system. Sure. Yeah, yeah, it could be. Well, I'm going to ask my doctor about this whole lightheadedness anyway. I think it's that I'm not hydrating myself enough, or that radiation can give you this kind of fatigue for like up to a year oh. after you have it. So I don't know. Man, I'm 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 falling apart. I'm an old man. What can I say? <laughs> Yeah, you know. I'm, I'm trying to figure something out. Maybe you know if that fly that landed on Pence's head laid eggs. By by, does that mean he has to carry them to full term? <laughs> well, 
It's <laughs> a good question. You know, what's interesting is uh, uh, Trump had uh, that, uh, um, what was it, the Regeneron thing? Regeneron yeah. or whatever it's called. Yeah. That his buddy, that his buddy sells. Yeah, but yeah. you know what it is? It's stem yeah. cells. Stem cells yeah. from aborted children or whatever. From aborted children. Yeah, so he's using baby juice, as somebody referred to it on Saturday Night yeah. Live. I was working on the branding for them. We were calling it fetus fuel. I hope fetus fuel? <laughs> okay. Yeah. But no, they did this, they did this whole thing with, uh, with uh, he, you know, he's so much against, oh, against using a fetal. Yeah, about, and by the way, if you want to shove that in me, that's fine. Yeah. I heard that he yelled out, fetus, don't fail me now. When they <laughs> that was right. That's right. I liked, uh, I liked, uh, everything, you know. I like George Takai's tweet the other night, which was, uh, black flies matter. <laughs> yeah. Spanish fly matters too, but that's a whole other thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh boy, we're li we're living in crazy times. It's, it's insane. This is it's absolutely insane. Yeah, it, it, I've never seen anything like it in my whole lifetime. Yep. And my well, you know, he apparently paid all those people to come to the White House on Saturday. Oh, did he really? really? Yeah. A woman whose name Candace Owen, I think, is her name. Yeah. She apparently paid these people to come. Well, they were basically black and Hispanic. Right. They had to wear t they had to wear her t-shirts. Candace Owen is this woman who does like podcasts and stuff, right? Yeah, I don't, yeah, I never heard of her before. Right, but. right, right. When she has this thing called Blexit, which is black or something like that. Black X or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. A, a friend of mine who's an activist in Cincinnati, black black friend of mine, said that. The, the best way for me to understand who she is is to recognize that she's like the Jewish guys that were helping load the trains. Um, I thought that was a little extreme, but that was the explanation I got. Um, yeah. These people are amazing. Um, yes, but you know, he's now immune, so he's super president, so it's all good. But he's now immune. Yeah, <laughs> he had the cure. Well, on 60 Minutes last night, they interviewed this a scientist, the one who came up with the AIDS cocktail. And he was talking about the, the that type of therapy and how it would not necessarily work for everybody, but it's possible that it it did help him. Well, it's possible it helped him, but you know, to think that he is cured of it now or that it has gone away is ridiculous. Yeah, and I mean, that he's not infecting everyone he even, sees. Even people who have fully survived COVID have after effects for years, they think yep. now. I mean, there, there's cool. some terrible side effects afterwards. We think so, yeah. It's hard to say if it's for years since it hasn't been years yet, but it probably will be. Yeah, but I mean- it, just, it, just don't know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, 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 Adrian's dad here, <laughs> Brian- She just ran away. Brian- <laughs> she, made, she was uh, right here. Brian she was here and she just ran away. Oh, Brian, <laughs> the company makes these things. These are- Oh, you got one. Look at that. Yeah, that, that, that he well, he sent it to me. He sent me along with a uh, a mask, which I can't find right now, which kind of doesn't fit very well. What is this? Yeah, it, it's and they I, they did a terrible job. I shouldn't say that, but yeah, I, they, it just says our name everywhere. Well, and... I also don't know if a mask like this necessarily does the job as much as a mask like this, which is pleated and has you know yeah. several layers on it, things like yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, I use the pleated one because then you could do the bar around your nose really well. I see people with it like sticking out and all this stuff, but this one forms on my big Italian nose and goes right around and it goes off my face. So that's why I like this one. Where are people getting their masks? Are they uh, steal them from own. work? <laughs> steal them from work. <laughs> Amazon. I got a sewing machine. I make my own. Really? Because <laughs> because we have we have like about three hundred of them because our Chinese overlords uh, that my wife works for uh, sent us a box of a hundred and then sent us another box of a hundred and then said, "Well, things aren't getting better. Here's another box of a hundred. And the other day I went over and I took one out of the one of the boxes and Marjorie says, "Don't do that. We're going to run out of them." And we're going, how long do you think this thing's going to last? If I wore a new one every day for the next year, we wouldn't run out of them. Okay. So, you know, 
And I've been using the same one over and over again. I like to put on a fresh one now. And then. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this idea that the cloth ones don't do their job, you know, the, the virus transmits in a water droplet. Mm -hmm. So this idea that the virus is so small it passes through the mask is, is bullshit. Well, also, it's, it's one not other true. Thing, they, they, they've been asking this question of a lot of doctors lately uh, who know about this stuff. Okay. Yeah. And they said, if you had the choice between a vaccine and a face mask, which would you choose? Yep. And every one of them, without even pausing, said face mask. Yep. Yep. Because a, a vaccine's only 50% effective. Face masks are what, Brian? I don't know. Much probably, more effective. Probably 90% effective. Maybe they say it's like 70 for transmission and 30 for getting, something like that. Yeah. But now the numbers are, ri are rising. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, you know, I mean, it. it so yeah. why we can't get people to wear masks? I mean, yeah. we got it. So let's, Rick, let's talk about the Jews in Brooklyn. Yeah, yeah please. You know, there's one more. There's one more factor, too, speaking of Jews in Brooklyn. When you wear a mask, there's a psychological evidence that it reminds you to distance because you can feel it on your face. Ever talk to an old Orthodox Jew that wears a yarmulke? He says, I wear it to remind me my place below, you know, whatever deity. It's right. the same. It's the same effect. Well, that's a that's a good point. They wear a yarmulke, but they won't yeah. wear a mask. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, okay. they, they won't put a sign outside saying in order to enter this uh, this uh, this uh, synagogue, you must wear a mask, but they do have rules that you must wear a yarmulke. And they're preventing COVID brain. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the only thing it prevents you is from maybe God striking you with a lightning bolt. I don't know what the uh, what the effect is of it. That's only if you put it on with a rubber O-ring. Yeah, but I mean, just, uh, um, uh, but these guys, these, these, these guys over there. Well, as I've said to you the other day, as a Jew, you don't like this country? Go back to Russia, wherever you came from. Well, no, I, I have a different take on it. My take is this is a self-inflicted... Will kill themselves? No, self-inflicted, self-imposed Holocaust. Yeah. You know? I mean... But then they're ahead. giving it to me and you. You know, I don't mind if you stay in your neighborhood and you don't wear a mask and you get COVID and you <clears> infect <throat> each other and you all drop dead and there's no more Diamond District, okay? I don't care. All right. Just don't infect me. Yep. You know, don't walk down 47th Street. I had an interesting exactly. conversation with with an attorney, a friend of mine who who works for for doctors, and he said, you know, that the Trump Trump insists on everybody signing those non disclosures, and people go, well, why would you have him do that? Because the HIPAA laws, based in the HIPAA law, there's a paragraph that if your illness poses a public health threat, yeah, they have to report. So by doing these non-disclosures, they can't tell us because he's a public health threat. That's how they've skirted the law, the HIPAA law. So no, no one's allowed in Trump's room. No one's allowed to treat him. Nothing if they don't sign a non-disclosure because they know the HIPAA rules would 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 force them to have to give us that information if they didn't have the non-disclosure. Well, wait a minute, the Hippocratic. But all those people on Saturday had to fill out a form saying we will not hold Donald Trump Incorporated or something. Yeah libel if you get ill but wait a minute it wasn't a campaign no rally but wait a minute then why are you holding well, donald trump this. incorporated think, think about this truthfully how many campaign rallies has he been holding on public land most yeah. too many most yeah well the, those ones where he was giving the talk you know i've got a green screen behind me mm -hmm. his green screen is not as good as mine he, he wasn't, the background was not where he was. No, no, it was a very bad background. Yeah. It, I, I mean, think the first one was done outside because I think there was a shadow from the trees on him. Yeah. But I, the, the, the last one he did where he's standing out there in front of the White House on the lawn, that was a green screen. Yeah. And I did some, some research and it turns out he's kind of a jerk. In case people don't <laughs> know what a, who are watching don't know what a green screen is, Give them an example, Andrew. Just remove your background. Asking me to take my clothes off? Yeah. Now, hold on a sec. It'll take me a second to pull it up here. Yeah. Here we go. Watch. 
there. There's a green screen in back. Here's, you can see on the back of my chair, so you can't see my chair. Oh, oh, you do that too? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And, and I have these if I want yeah. to be a jerk and do crazy things. Yeah, like you could, you could, yeah, hide your hand. Or Rubber gloves. Yeah, make things float in the screen. Yeah, I, I, bought, I had one on order and they never got it to me. And then when it came time for them to be able to get it to me, they weren't in stock any longer. So, but yeah, it, well, what happens is anything is green is replaced by, by whatever background you put on it. And he yeah. has a better green screen going for him now than Trump had. The other yeah, well, let me show you. Um, Melania had a good green screen. Mm -hmm. The and dress then, oh, she wore. Oh, I've got this backwards. <laughs> oh, yes. She wore she the dress. dress. And people were doing like putting stuff on it and so on. Everything. Yeah. But here's the lighting, too, for when I'm having meetings. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Wow. What? Well, I, you know, I have a lot. And, of, and then lights. there's this one, depending on the need. There's an addition. I have lights here um, that I use that I bought, which uh, are actually pretty, it's pretty pretty damn good. Wait a minute. Why isn't that? Why isn't that? What what happened? <laughs> but I found like when I'm recording my corporate, my, my podcast, which I'm launching here in about a week. Yeah, I'm able to do this for my background. And it looks really Yeah, official, very, very professional. You see, you see here's yeah. my here's my uh... and this is when I listen to the president speak. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. Anyway, so I mean, um, uh, I do I do lighting here too. I found that it makes me look it, it makes the whole thing look better. Um, so how you doing, Charlie? Charlie joined us, and he's down yep. there in Texas, which is uh, working really oh, yeah. hard at trying to surpass New York in mm -hmm. uh, COVID. Well, you do you have surpassed us in COVID cases, haven't you? Um, in cases, yeah. And now you're working on the death. You're working on the death part of it. Yeah. Yeah. Second and, only to you in deaths. <laughs> well, we had a lot of them because we 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 were blindsided by this whole yeah. thing, you know. Uh, Constant thriving to be number one, huh? <laughs> I found a reason. I mean, I I, I kind of like the, uh, our our governor Mario Cuomo only because of the way he's handled this whole thing. Before then, I didn't give a crap about him, and I didn't even care for him that much. And yesterday they had a thing on CBS Sunday morning with Mario Cuomo and his daughters. Man, does he have good looking daughters. You're talking about Andrew, not Mario. I, I, yeah. Andrew, I know, I keep saying Mario. Andrew Cuomo. What good looking daughters he's got. You any phone numbers there, Alex? Hmm? <laughs> no, two of them, two of them are by uh, uh, Kennedy. He was married to. Ken, was that Carrie Kennedy or Carrie which Kennedy? One? Yeah, yeah. And that was, uh, and then the, and uh, their uh, the twins were by her. And that's odd because no Kennedy is very attractive, yeah, really. These girls are just well. Cuomo was a pretty good-looking guy, you know. Yeah. You know, um, but he, I mean, um, he, he can get very funny. <clears throat> That's what I like about him. You know, he's so New York uh, in his attitude about things. But when he takes somebody to the woodshed like Trump, he takes them to the woodshed New York style. My Trumpkin. You're, you're. <laughs> <laughs> Halloween's coming up. I had to get a Trumpkin. A Trumpkin? Yeah. <laughs> oh, boy. So uh, uh, let me see here. Uh, so uh, Shecky's out there, and I, I was watching you again last night. I, I, I watched the final Letterman show, and at the end, oh, yeah. at the end, they have a photograph of you, which is a very nice photograph. I vaguely remember which photograph they used. Yeah, no, it's just a really nice one. It just, you know, it's. It's not a goofy Shecky picture or anything like that. Oh, no, no. None of the pictures were goofy. Yeah, yeah. But then, I don't know if you remember, <clears throat> in the shows for the month, they were showing pictures of us on the Letterman baseball cards they made. And I saw mine the other day, and I think I was doing either Elvis or one of the cats for that one. Or one of the cats? Yeah, because they were doing that for a month. 
of all the staffers, you know, going into commercial breaks. Yeah, but wait a minute. But on the, the final show, they were serious folks. You played, you, know. a, you played a cat? You know that. I was one of the cats from Cats. Oh, really? No, I didn't know that. Me and Jerry Mulligan. <laughs> and at one point, they did a piece where we had to walk down to the Winter Garden where Cats was playing. And all of a sudden, we're be being photographed by Japanese tourists. <laughs> And they're, you know, putting their arms around us. And we just like, yeah. How long, did it, how long did it take to put that makeup on you? Oh, over an hour. Really? And Andy Carell, who did the original makeup for the cats, was our makeup woman when we first started doing it. So she did it for two hours. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm confused. Japanese are, have cameras? Yeah, who would believe it? Huh. But I stopped playing the cats because we would do the this, this segment pre taped and it would never air. And I finally was like, I'm not putting this makeup on to get bumped. You mean um, they, would, they would do something and then they wouldn't air it? Oh, there's tons of that stuff. I've told you a story about Shrekky, haven't I? Shrekky? Well, Shrek was playing across the street on in the Broadway theater. Yeah. So Dave's like, well, you know, Shrekky is playing across the street. We have our own Shrekky. So I'm in this giant green thing with green makeup on. <laughs> so Dave looks at it 20 seconds before air, starts laughing hysterically, and then shakes his head like, uh -uh, this ain't going to be on my show. <laughs> <laughs> that was basically to get me in this makeup. <laughs> so then you had to get all this green stuff off. Yeah. Yep. Do yep. you think that perhaps occasionally he did things just to torture you? Yes. Absolutely. Really? Oh, okay. Oh, no question about it. There was one pre-tape that never aired. It was something to do with, it, with audience members. And I'm sitting in the audience with my shirt off and Dave is scrubbing me down. <laughs> never aired. It never aired. <laughs> and because we worked on the show, we never put into after it to get paid, which as a real actor, you would want a payment. Yeah, yeah. You know. Well, in the show, they also did the top 10 lists were the, the friends. The top 10 longest termed employees. Well, no, no. The, 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 on the final show, the top 10 list was the things I've always wanted oh, to say to Dave by, by people who had appeared on the show over the years, like Alec like, Baldwin like and so on. Stars. Yeah. And, and Seinfeld was there, and he said something. And then later on, they brought on Julia Louis-Dreyfus. And the thing she always wanted to say was, I've always wanted to be on a show that had a worse finale than ours. Oh. And <laughs> an intern wrote that line. Really? Yeah. And, and then they cut to Jerry and he's giving her a dirty look. I mean, it was all fun, but yeah. Because that was not her original line, but some, one of the interns in the writer's area yeah. came up with it. Oh, that was a great line. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 But it was good. It was a good last show, you know. Oh, I think it was perfect. Yeah, yeah. I mean, how do you end something like that? You know. I really yeah. had to do it twice. And he really. also he also made sure that the last I think I would say five to seven minutes of the show was the Foo Fighters doing um aqua whatever their number. And then they showed they showed uh, montage, the montage and stuff. But he never appeared again to say goodbye. Yeah, I he guess never, you're right. He never came back and said goodbye. The next thing they ran were the credits. Oh, yeah. I thought that was a great way of doing it because it didn't have that, you know, Johnny Carson gets us on the stool and says, thank you, you've been wonderful, it's been what goodbye, and walks off. You no, know? We had meetings for months about that show, about 10 of us. Yeah. with the most ridiculous ideas, one of which was mine, which was we're going to put the show on every, um, much, not billboard, what are the, um, the screens in Times Square? You know what I'm... Yeah, yeah. And eventually Dave just was like, no, this is what we're going to do. You know, after we did all this ridiculous planning. And like you saw, there was no Petrix that was originally going to be in the show. And he's like, no, we don't need Petrix. We don't need all this stuff. Yeah. 
So basically, we spent months planning it, and then Dave just took over after not paying attention for all those months and just said, here's what we're going to do. Well, the best way to do it, the best way to do it is the way he did it, which is just, hey, Simple. Very simple. This, this is the way we've done the show every night. Let's continue to do the show like we do it every night, except we're, we're kind of summing things up here. Here's some clips from, you know, I think McDonald's or whatever aired on that show, The Remote, where Dave, you know, just here's some clips. Here's some stuff. Here's 10 people. You know, you know I got to tell you something about the, that show. And now that you're no longer with it, I should have probably told you this when you were with it. But unfortunately, I didn't have the same feeling about it that I do now. But as I look upon it in the landscape of late night television, continually every time i put it on and it's all, almost every episode's on youtube okay well that's because of don giller yeah yeah uh uh it it remains totally and completely entertaining yeah but you still have and I, i've said it to you i'm sure that period towards the end where dave had to sit there with the 20 year old twit that he never heard of and she's showing off her breasts to him so the 65-year-old man can look down her, you know. Yeah. And that's why he gave up. You know, it's like, I, I can't do this. Well, I think he also gave up because what was happening on the other networks was so kind of like Fallon well, was just stupid. Well, derivative also of what he had done or Steve Allen had done or Carson had done, whoever. You know, but, 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 but Fallon had lowered himself to the point where any guests had to play a game with him. Yeah. You know? Like when Dave would play What's My Line or something, he would just play it with Paul like out of nowhere. It was never in a script. Yeah, but I mean, he could not, he could not, A, if he was intending to compete with Fallon on Fallon's level, because that's not what Dave did. Dave did the traditional late night talk show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I got to tell you, uh, the guy who still does it is what's his name over at ABC? Gordon. No, the guy Kimmel. over at ABC. Jimmy Kimmel. Uh, Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel. That's a very traditional late night talk show. That's the one I watch. And I like in fact, he did it. Um, uh, he he kind of, I think he, he really was enamored of Dave as he said. Oh, no, he said uh, that on our show the first time he did it. And he understands from that what doing a late night talk show is. Uh, and uh, Corden's good. Corden does a nice job. But, but also Kimmel's first executive producer was Daniel Kellison, who, again, was one of our people. Really? Oh. And then it became Jill Lederman, who was also one of our people. Yeah. And then it became Bob Goldthwaite for a while. He was directing for a while. Yeah. Did a good job, too. I like yeah. I like Kimmel. That's I've been to see the show live a couple times when I was out out west. I only saw it in Brooklyn because Jill invited me to go out to Brooklyn when they were in town. I think he does a very good job. Yeah, you know I think. He well, was... he grew into it because in the first year. Oh yeah, yeah. The audience drunk. Yeah, yeah. I remember they got yeah. the yeah. audience in the bar yeah, in the lobby for the audience. Cocktails. <laughs> We and then he brought it. a little more order to it because Daniel Bye. had done the man show with him. Oh, there she is. Hello. Yeah, we got uh, 1.30s on, uh, on uh, Mondays. She has a thing with her teacher, so I got to go. So. Oh, okay. oh, really? Oh, you have to go, so it's just going to be the four of us. Oh, okay. call to the, call to Tony's going to call. <laughs> You know what your roughest job is going to be, Brian? is when she starts to become a dating age and having to keep a baseball bat by the door to keep the guys away because they're all going to be going after her. They have so many tracker systems, though, so it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, say goodbye. Thank you, Brian. I appreciate it. <laughs> okay, bye. See you guys tomorrow night. What? What, what's that? Oh, that's, it's an iPhone. What are you yeah. doing with an iPhone? You're a kid. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye, yeah. kid. Bye. All right. Isn't that the most adorable kid you've ever seen? Just yeah. amazing. Yeah. Just amazing. By the way, we do have some openings here. Some of our regulars aren't calling us today. Um, they oh, well, usually they call us. They're, they're celebrating Indigenous Peoples Day. It could be. <laughs> it could be. 
they're out marching on um, Columbus Avenue, you know. Yeah. Um, uh, but, or they're watching the Coney hearings, if those are still going on today at the moment. I, you know, I started watching those. I, I Is it my imagination, or are they supposed to be asking questions? First, no, they're they all, all just have First, they all have to introduce themselves, and then they start asking questions. But, but no, but then they, they get, once they get into asking her questions, they're going to showboat for like three quarters of the time allotted to them, and then ask them one, ask her one question. Here's here's the strategy, Alex, that that they've got to start. Here's my question. I'm now a senator, so to tell me, what do you know as a candidate for the Supreme Court about the emoluments clause? Can you ex can you explain? and what it would mean to violate that and how you would judge and just keep all of his constitutional crimes ask about them her opinion that's on very them. good that's a very good idea that's how i would do it but it that's would, not what either party will do you know i know because they all want to they all want to score points instead of do the right thing if yeah. if a president abused the the campaign laws and would held, you, held you, rallies on government property, what does the Constitution say about that? You, you're an expert in the Constitution. We want your opinions, and and make her make her convict, hold either, trial. Either that, or say to her, "Okay, look, we want to find out about you. Tell us on Roe versus Wade. Mm -hmm. If that were brought before you, how would you vote? Mm -hmm. And don't let her get away with. Well, I would have to figure it out at that time because or I would follow what the Constitution." says which is all you have to say is no tell us now because it's not going to be a different question later yeah you know it's it's yeah. going to be should that should roe versus wade exist or not do you believe it should or it shouldn't exist but it's like the vice yeah, presidential debate uh, last week where you ask a question and then either of them go you know what i was talking about 20 minutes ago let me get back to that so I'm going to run out the clock on this question. Oh, I, you know, she's there to show her her knowledge of the Constitution. I would be asking her the constitutional questions. Look who's here. Somebody hasn't been here for weeks. I wonder. I was thinking last night, where is Mandy? And there she is. She's I'm right here. Now. I've been looking at, I'm sorry, I've been looking at cars. <laughs> um, I was wanting to jump on, but then I got all immersed in looking at cars because my car got totaled so i have to get a new one or okay? i'm not getting a new one i'm getting oh yeah i'm fine i just have to get another car so yeah. wait a minute your car got towed total oh total oh, totaled. Totaled. oh okay i thought you said towed and i'm thinking yeah. when my totaled. car used to get towed i didn't say well i'm not going to pay the ticket i'm just going to buy a new car <laughs> i thought maybe the car got covid it got totaled yeah. how did that happen well i had a little accident a little boo-boo that, did, did, was it your fault or did I, I did I rear-ended someone really and it was just too you know the car was it was a 16 Hyundai Sonata hybrid and it I mean it's in really good condition but it just had too much damage like the damage that, that was quoted got it up there in the the range of it so in other words the it, at this point the insurance company is willing to pay it off rather than fix it right okay and but what, I really like the car, you know. Yeah. Kind of wanted to keep it. Yeah. But that's all right. I'm gonna. It's like forcing me to maybe go more, a little more frugal. So <laughs> what cars are you looking at? Well, now I'm looking at like I'm only three miles from my office, so I really don't need to worry about having a, you know, a really high mileage, you know, good gas mileage car. Well, would you get a yes. used car um, like a yeah, twenty? I'm, I'm looking or at like something? a Honda Civic, like a twelve, you know, just pay cash and. Be done with it. I got a Shark Truce 1982 Yugo. I'm looking for a home for it. A Yugo. But how are you going to get it there? <laughs> yeah. Oh, truck. Same way it goes everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, what. This is the bad thing about Atlanta. You got to have a car. You know, it has been. How long has it been since I? It, 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 the last time I actually owned a car was the year we came out here from California, Rick. I saw yeah. the car. Well, we, we made the drive from California when you moved here. Uh -huh. Yeah, but we would rent, rented a car to, to come out. Did we? No, yeah. I thought we were in your no, car. We rented a car, remember? Oh, I, no, we rented it, and then we had a flat tire in front of your apartment building. Did we really? I can't remember that. We were about to leave, 
and the tire was flat. <laughs> no. Well, anyway, I we rented a car. You're right. We did, we did have we a. We had those two big. Uh, like an SUV. Electronic thing. Yeah, Steve, yeah, Steve Ruberg stuff in the back. Yeah, yeah. Which right. ruined our trip to Monument Valley. Oh, okay. Explain Monument Valley. See, what happened is I had these two giant pieces of electronic equipment, television studio in a box called Trinities, but they were they were big. So I had to, you know, get the... Uh, You're bringing them back to New York. I'm bringing them to New York. Okay. Uh, so, all right. So we, you want, we, on the way over, we stop at Monument Valley because we, being movie fans, we both want to see the place where all those John Wayne films were made. John Ford films, more. John Ford, oh, yeah. John Wayne was in most of yeah. them. Uh, those John Ford films, you know, all those big buttes and things like mm -hmm. that, you know. And um, in order to get into the actual area where there are a lot of these things it's dirt roads and it's rocky roads and it's not paved roads and whatever it was bumpy and i was afraid i would ruin the equipment by doing that so now you feel you've never seen monument valley but you've seen it i've seen it i mean yeah. we have photographs of it it looks like monument valley but, but it, we didn't get to drive into it and you know <laughs> my fault mm -hmm. now well, Okay. <laughs> okay. Now, there is another place nearby there, though, where John Ford made films and m more of them. And it has a lot of that iconic look, you know, that we always associate with being, if you do a shot of America, you take a shot of Monument Valley, you know. Uh, but there's another valley that does serve the same purpose for him and supposedly was used more often. It wasn't Canyon de Shea because we stopped there too, but that wasn't where it was. No, no. But we did actually stay overnight in Monument Valley at some motel down the road. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we didn't stay in Monument Valley. That's no, we stayed in a motel down the road. They do have. They did have some facilities though in Monument Valley, didn't they? Because the Indians. I don't think they had a motel the Indian, there. The Indians think, own. The American Indians or Native Americans own the place. Basically. Yeah, no, I think we stayed like two miles outside of, quote, Monument Valley. Yeah, but uh, it was still it was still wonderful to see. And then we saw yeah. Bryce Canyon, and then we went down through the south. We and, went on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, the rim that no one goes to. Yes, which is very nice. Yeah, because everyone and, goes to the south rim, of course. What, that's was, what were the caves we went through? Oh, it, that was in the, the, I mean, I always forget the name. That was like in uh, Virginia, down Kentucky. somewhere down. Mammoth Caves down in Kentucky. Mammoth Caves. Mammoth. Yes. yes. Mammoth. That's yeah. a neat place. Well, you know, you know what? I have claustrophobia, but and there was this one area we could really get claustrophobia. Okay, on the on the trip, uh, and I didn't get it. Mm. I can't figure out to this day why I didn't get claustrophobia. Because the bats were scaring you? Well, because I think there, were, there was a person in front of me and a person in back of me. And so I had a relationship to the, for some reason, it, it's the same reason I think why if you have like, you're afraid of heights and then you look out the window of an airplane, it doesn't scare you mm -hmm. yeah. because you don't have a straight line to the, uh, to the, uh, to the ground like you do with a building, say, if you looked over the edge of a building. So. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's like skydiving. When you jump out of the plane, you don't feel that that stomach like you do on a roller coaster, because your eyes don't have the the ability to to connect. Mandy, do you have any phobias? I I do kind of have a fear of heights. Like I get that queasy. Yeah, me too. Thing. I just yeah. yeah yeah. Even even if I'm if I'm playing a video game and there's a mm -hmm. point at which it looks over something, and I, I yeah I get that. You know, even but it's true what you said about the airplane thing. That is where when you look out of an airplane window, I never, I, I, I never am bothered by heights looking out of out of an airplane. Mm -hmm. No, me neither. Yeah. How about you, Charlie? You got any phobias? Yeah, fear of heights. Fear of heights. Why is that? Um, that's that's very common, doesn't it? Uh, it's because you have no, you would have no control. Oh. What'd you say? I went up on the Sears Tower and they've got this plexiglass. Oh, wall God, I could not do that. Of. I couldn't I do it. I passed out on it. You passed out? 
Yeah, yeah, I, I'm a guy so lightheaded, I swear I fainted. Yeah. They have a new one, don't they, here in New York now, Shecky? This this building with this, it uh, looks oh, like the one, a beak. Yeah, Penn Station, whatever that building's called. Yeah, but it looks like it has a beak, the building, and it's this, it just comes out of the building. It's like 100 stories high, and they have one of those, you know. And it's all kind of glass. Yeah. That you're walking on, and you're looking straight down at the. Uh, nope. God, I could not do that. Yeah. Nope. Does you love? Does, did you ever watch those videos of just different places around the world where people are going on those roads right on the edge of a mountain? Oh, I've had and those I'm, rickety yeah. buses. <laughs> they look like they're just. I've fall. had to drive a road like that in in Europe. I had to ride drive a road no. like that, uh, uh, and. Uh, you know, on one side, it's just, there weren't even guardrails. Yeah. Oh, there's, oh. there's one, I when I would go hiking in Peru to get to where we would go, there's one that's just one lane. Yeah. You look straight down, it's a thousand feet. And where yeah. the water washes out the road, someone just threw a slab of concrete and they drive up on it. But as you're going, somebody might be coming the other way or a cow, and then they have to back up. Oh, that was the other thing. This it road, is. which it was coming out of Switzerland, it was coming out of I was in, um, you know, the uh, where they have the um, the uh, what's the the famous the Swiss Alps. Well, the famous mountain there, uh, the Matterhorn. The Matterhorn. Matterhorn. Uh, and uh, Zermatt. I will, we were leaving Zermatt and then going up <laughs> the Alps, out down into. I believe it was Italy, and there's a road going down that's just, it's like one lane practically, and so if there's a bus coming up, you're not being asked to either back up or they're being asked to back down on a one lane road with no guardrails along the side mm -hmm. of it. And I'm wondering how many people have gotten killed on that road. Not many. It's, it's the old story about learning how to walk a tightrope. You take 20 guys and you give them the high wire. Yeah. 20 guys and you give them the low wire and ask at the end of a month, which ones learned how to walk the tightrope? Well, the answer is the ones on the high one. Because if, if they didn't, I'm sorry, the one, the, if, if, they, if they screwed up, they'd be dead. So they had to learn. The ones that were down, if they fell a few times, who cared? But anyway, what I was going to say to Shecky is I am driven since... 19, right. I haven't had a 2000, 2000, 2000, maybe no, 2003, I think it was, I believe. Oh. Uh, and uh, I haven't owned a car since then. And I haven't really driven in the last five years. And I just, I'm afraid to drive. One time when I come over well, here, I, told you, I was on the road the other day. Rand, my friend Randy was, she was driving. And I'm just watching drivers on the Grand Central Parkway racing in and out of traffic. I don't want to do that. I don't want to be on the it's road with crazy. these people. Next time I come over to your place, which is probably going to be in, in a couple of years from now, at the rate these yeah. things things are going, yeah. would you let me drive your car, you know, just really get behind the wheel sure. and drive for a block or two, just to see that I can still do it? Well, I remember my friend Susan got married. You drove the car home because Randy and I were both drunk. That's right. I was a, I, I'm always the designated driver. You were still I, visiting at this point. You weren't living here, but you came and visited yeah. me. And you went to the wedding, and they had a vodka bar. <laughs> yeah, that, which is like, that's, that's like uh, not a good thing for you. Uh, but, no, and then but I, I also you, know you ahead, don't go ahead, so it's like I told you, go ahead. I got it was going to be sober. Yeah, I told you, go ahead and get drunk, because I'm I don't drink, so I'm always the best yeah of all possible designated drivers. And then I drove right. Here are the keys. Get us home. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I want to know that I can still drive today and I figure if maybe, you, you know, we, yeah, but no, I'll tell you, what was it last Tuesday when we went into Manhattan for the first time in nine months, mm -hmm. it was a little scary watching these other drivers. Well, I think people because of the COVID thing are crazy on the roads. You, you seem to agree, Mandy. Right. Well, I just remember during the the height of the lockdown, or like at the beginning of the lockdown, like April, and there was it was so eerie because there was nobody in traffic, and you would just the few times I was out, you know, you would drive down the interstates, and people would be like drag racing, you know, racing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they're the souped up cars that people have, and it was just crazy. I'm like, what in the world? Yeah. You know, I'm just. Mm -hmm. Well, I said to Marjorie, 
when the COVID thing was, you know, at its height at the beginning, I said, when this is all over, this town's going to go nuts. And sure enough, there, uh, how many, how many gun shootings are there in this town now? Oh, it's like read the daily news and it's like pages of, you know, Billy Schwartz was shot today. This one was, you know, and it's like, huh? Yeah, it's, it, you know, people have gone. It, 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 I think there was literally no joke, five or six pages today in the paper of people in Brooklyn or the Bronx, you know, this one was, you know, stabbed. This one was shot. This one was, you know. Yeah. And I, I and they were all, by the way, upstanding Americans, even though they were members of the Bloods of the Crips or something. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but I mean, I which kind of sneaks into the story, you know. Sometimes you just got to thin the herd, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, that's what we're going to be doing in uh, Brooklyn with the Jews. You know? uh, well, I mean, you know, with the spreader in chief on the road and the murders and otherwise. Yeah, we'll but I mean, people, that whole world pollution problem. People are going, people are going nutty. Is it happening in Texas too, Charlie? Um, yeah, pretty much. But you don't go out, right? No, I just I see it on the news, so. I decided I was going to go walking, and then I decided I'm going to start using that damn Peloton, even though it hurts my, even though it hurts my ass, you know, uh, because um, uh, my daughter's trying to get one of those. Yeah, but the, I, the seat is just—it's like it. I, well, I wore some pants yesterday. It worked okay. Oh, it's over, says Marjorie. Um, okay, what? What? Uh, I was going to, I, I was going to pick her up, but then. Uh, I decided, wait a minute, that means I have to take a lift over there and then a lift back, where if she just calls lift, the lift will pick her up and take her home. Here, here they won't let you do that at the hospital. You have to have, so have someone there to pick you up. But no, they yeah. will allow you if, you if you do something like lift or whatever. That is considered something. No, New York Hospital will not allow that. Oh, really? Oh. You may end up having to go or get somebody to meet her there. Well, well no, I don't think so. No. Uh, well, no. So I had to have when I had the colonoscopy. I had a friend meet me. We walked out of the building and then I went to the subway. And he got in a cab and went home. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, so you know what I read uh, somewhere online? You know the park down the block for me, Alex? Yeah. They had a secret rave there on Saturday night. A hundred people. Really? Where they bust them in. Son of a bitch. Right? He just says it's over. You guys already talked about voting. Did any voting start early? I'm going to do it on in person on election day. I dropped my absentee ballots at the county uh, yesterday. Yeah, I voted by mail a week ago. I've got my absentee ballot, but I don't trust it enough that I want to do it in person, even though in New York, you already know Biden wins, but... I'm still yeah. going to do it. I had I had such a good time. I may vote again. By the way, <laughs> he says it's over. Well, early voting started today, and I'm already seeing the wait times are three and four hours. Yeah, they were around the block here. I waited in my car to drop off the ballot at the at the county because the the state of Ohio did the same thing as Texas. Even yeah. though we've got millions of people in the county, there's one location to drop it off. Uh, no, that's so bad. So we. Uh, do you have to show ID? You got to show ID no. here. No. No, you don't have that to show really ID. Those thing up. Things but uh, there's, there's when you when you drive past the election headquarters, there's a, a guy on the right and a guy on the left. So depending where you are in traffic, you either pass it through your right window or left window so they can get two cars at a time. And they put it in the box and they give you the sticker and say thank you. And and then you can go online and see when. You know, it's a you know, count. It's a holiday, so I doubt they're working. But tomorrow I'll be able to see if they decided my signature wasn't mine. Ben, did you get a fast tag for your election district? What's a fast tag? They sent me a fast tag that when I walk in to vote, I just show them the fast tag. They scan it. My name comes up and they hand me a ballot. No. Oh. No. Must be, is it an age thing or? No, I have no idea because I used to always go in and tell them my name and then the person starts, you know, it's Sheckman. And they're looking in the X, Y's, and Z's as I'm going S, C, H. <laughs> and then they're looking there, and I'm like, there it is, you know. <laughs> did you did you see what went on in California? These right-wing jackasses created these boxes. Fake, fake boxes. Yeah. 
Yeah. And got caught. Well, anyway, I got a, I got a note from Marjorie. She says it's over, but I have to sit longer because no one is here to take me home, even though I'm taking a lift. I yeah. told. That's what I told. And you. I wrote to her, just get up and walk out. Yeah. yeah. I don't see how they, they can't hold you hostage. Well, hostage. I mean, what are they going to do? Hold you, you hostage? Out. I'm sorry. Well, you're going to have to stay here till next year. Yeah. I mean, they, the they just can't do that. Keep walking. Well, I mean, I would have gone over to pick her up if I knew it was going to be a pain in the ass. I just wouldn't have done this today. Uh, but I mean, it just, um, it's amazing to me. It says, oh, waiting for papers and the doctor, she says. Okay, well. Well, when I had the colonoscopy in February, I'm waiting for the doctor for an hour and I finally walked up and they're like, oh, he's in another procedure. He, so I'm like, do I really need to talk to him? So I left and then he called me like an hour later and said, everything's fine. Well, I mean, I, I, uh, well, but I, I could have still been sitting there for another two hours waiting for him well, to I go. Stayed, I stayed around fine. for my doctor, but he, he came and saw me immediately, but she went over there. She had a two o'clock appointment today and they didn't get to her till three 30. Yeah. Well, I, you know, that never happened to me when I had a two o'clock, I two o'clock, the juice was being pumped in my arm. You know? No, and I had the colonoscopy. I think I sat there for over an hour waiting to be, quote, taken in. I always schedule mine absolutely first appointment in the morning, no matter how far out I got to wait for it. But every time I've gone, they want to see the eyes of the person who's who's waiting for me. Before in the back. Oh, no. They're, they were like, is there someone here with you? And my friend, he just waves like, I'm here. <laughs> you know? So, Mandy, how's your job? And then doing? when it was over, like, Wait, hold on you want your friend to come and sit with you? And it's like, no, not really. <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to say you have your friend. Anyway, I want to ask Mandy how work is going for her. Oh, it's going good. It's very busy. Uh, we were off today, though. We get a day off on Columbus Day. Because today is Columbus Day. Yeah. What are you saying? Indigenous American Day or something, whatever. Right. Yeah. And I went to, uh, this weekend, I went to Uvalda, Georgia. Where? Uvalda which is probably population 10. <laughs> I don't know. Went with a friend. We rented a cabin, mm. Swamp River cabin. It was on the Oconee River. And yeah, it was just a one room cabin, bathtub in the room with, the, <laughs> you know, everything was all in the same room. It was really cool. I used to work up. in ball ground, Georgia. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Up on the way to, what's that, Jasper and. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's up, that's up north. This yeah. is south. This now is how, how, how much are you keeping yourself? You're, you're in Georgia, right? If I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. right? Which yeah. is, has got a real COVID problem right now. Yeah. And actually, the friend I went with, he had COVID about a month ago. Oh, really? <laughs> but he he's fine. I mean, he was sick for like a week. Yeah, he felt pretty yeah, crummy, but he wasn't, he never, you know, he didn't have to be hospitalized or anything like that. He was, but he was just felt crummy. He had fever and stuff like that. But yeah. Well, Good. But I mean, yeah. are you watching out for yourself? I mean, are you making sure you wear a mask everywhere you go? Oh, yeah. I, I don't really go many places. I just go to work and I teach fitness classes, but we only have maybe like three. Lately, it's just been three and four people in my class. And then we do Facebook Live. Um, yeah. so a lot of people do it from home. Yeah. Um, but other than that, I just go to the store. And my mom's been in a rehab, so I couldn't visit her. She broke her back, but she's home now. Uh, but I couldn't visit her the whole time. Yeah. Um, but the one good thing about my mom being in rehab, even though she hadn't really been going anywhere, I'm driving her car, her, her Prius. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, so I can leisurely shop for one and not yeah. be in a rush. But um, yeah, I don't really, still don't really yeah, go I anywhere. I have a friend of mine, uh, comedian Will Durst, who had a stroke about a year ago. And I was talking to his wife the other day. We had her on the program. She hasn't been able to see him in six months. Oh my God. You know, it's because he, the, the, they, they don't want, she has been able, he's on a ground floor. So she's been able to go to his window and wave and visit him through the window and wave. Yeah. It's, and when she got to the, re, she was in the hospital. And then when, yeah. after about a week, they sent her to rehab and she had to be in quarantine yep. for, for yep. like 10 days, the first 10 days. She was there for about a month. Yeah. How, she now, just came home the other day. How old was your friend who had, had the COVID? He's 55. 55. Oh, wow. Well, mm -hmm. He's kind of getting in that dangerous area. Yeah. Yeah. So 
Like, but um, it, I was teasing him because I was like, look at you. You are worse than the president. He's 20 years older than you. The president only had it for a couple of days. But he's immune. <laughs> if he ever he had it. Immune. And he said, well, he had the best drugs available. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, I missed y'all's conversation about, I mean, I haven't been on lately, as you know. And uh, what it, I, I'm still on the fence if he even had it. What is oh, y'all's yeah. Well, you know something? It, it, doesn't that say a lot for this guy? Yeah. That nobody it does. believes he actually had it. Because I'm like, how does a 74 year old man that eats Burger King every day yeah. not even hardly have a problem? But also, his doctor will not say he didn't have it. Oh. Remember, who his, remember who his doctor is? Around it. <laughs> his Dr. doctor Navy is in the Navy. And who is the commander in chief? Him. And who do you the take, thing is, who do you take orders from? Right. Him. The thing is, though, he did look pretty icky. You know what I mean? And he, you know there was those does not look well. video or those no. you know audio recordings of where it looked it seemed like they cut out a cough, and you know he yeah. did look like he was really well, having trouble breathing when he was having his Avita moment. What happened? Out. This this guy Q brought over this ventilator so he could fake the sickness to make us think he had it. He he he, he before he got out of the helicopter. I, I'm creating my own conspiracy theory since yeah. they're so good at it. I'm fascinated. Took a puff that. of this stuff that messed with his lungs so he could look like he was suffering. I don't believe that for a minute, but I'm saying it as if it's fact because now that I've said it, it's on the internet, so it's true. <laughs> yeah. Right. yeah. yeah but as I say, I'm like, I either want him to have had it, but I'm it was really cute. sick, or I'm thinking he didn't have it because yeah. there's no way he was only sick for two days. <laughs> left the hospital. At 6.30, when the evening news started, and arrived at the White House at 7 p.m. when the evening news ended. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. He knows how to run television. Yeah. Well, my group, Aranon, which, by the way, is one letter better than QAnon, we have facts. <laughs> We're one better. And, and we know that it's, it's a conspiracy. Well, Charlie, you know, Charlie from the beginning is saying, I don't believe it. Oh, I didn't. I'm still on the fence. Well, it's because all those people in the White House had. Well, you know, like, if he thought he why would all those people go along with saying that? You, you know, this shows, oh, no, they infected them, just that, not here. That shows you how disliked as a president he is, that I can turn on Saturday Night Live, and they're doing jokes throughout the whole show about his coronavirus. Mm -hmm. In other words, it, 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 people, and jokes about wishing him dead. That was the one I got. On the yeah, record. that I mean, that's kind of crossing the line. Yeah. Because well, we could I just want him to be really, really feel like crap, you know? <laughs> well, you want him to really have it big time. Yeah. 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 I mean, but it's just so, the whole thing is just so bizarre. It's getting more bizarre and more bizarre and more bizarre. We have to see the hook wife in a couple of weeks, you know, who was supposedly infected. So if he's been cured, how come she hasn't been? Right. How come cured? all these people? How come Chris? Well, Chris Christie apparently got out of the hospital. What? But he went home. Which is today. bizarre in yeah. itself. Talk about somebody who shouldn't be able to survive this thing. Well, no, but right. he, he went to the hospital as a precaution. Because he, has, he, because he, and not because of, he, he didn't say because I'm fat. He said because I have asthma. Oh. Yeah. yeah. And apparently they decided that he wasn't that bad and sent him home you know but he still was there a week yeah he was there a week yeah. but you know i mean i i expect any day to hear trump's been helicoptered back to i mean it would be in his girlfriend hope hampton or whatever her name is hope Hicks. yeah yeah well let's well, see he's on the campaign maybe... trail i'm sorry yeah. go ahead go ahead mandy <laughs> i was just saying that when you uh alex when you said that about um him getting sick again i was thinking the same thing him having a relapse or whatever. Yeah. But yeah. he's about due for it. And if it hadn't happened, then. Well, if he's still you know. sick or if he was sick doing these rallies, he's not going to be doing his two hours of stand up because he's not going to yeah. be able to, to, to make it to he the end of the rally. He couldn't do 15 minutes the other day. Yeah. yeah. You know. Well, again, tonight, let's see where he, how he does it. Does he run into the crowd and hug and kiss people or does he just stand by the airplane? Do 15 minutes and get back on the airplane. Oh, he's not. Gonna, he's not going to do as usual. It's an airplane hangar. He's doing this rally. Yeah, well, but he's yeah. not doing this in two hours. You know, no. like he normally does. You know, 
this uh, August and is he still out of the debate? Chain of months of oh, he, there's, no, there's no debate. Okay. Debates, they, they still have the other ones, the third one scheduled, but who knows? And they're that. talking about, he's, he's challenging that on the 28th, they want to do an actual, another one. Biden's smart. I mean, Trump backed out. Yeah. You know, the, the yeah. what, what, which of the Kennedy, it was a Kennedy-Nixon debate. Yeah, it was they were 3,000 miles apart. So it's not yeah. before Zoom. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, we all know the first Zoom meeting was the Brady Bunch opening, but it turns <laughs> out that, that, that back, back at Kennedy and, and, uh, and Nixon, they were 3,000 miles apart by satellite, did a debate. Hey, listen, uh, we've been doing this for an hour. Oh, another, wow. Another really nice, oh, wow. uh, nice, quiet, civil gathering. <laughs> And we also have Mandy here again, which is nice. I wish we, I wish you could do it more often, Mandy. Because yeah, I'm gonna try. Yeah. I'm just. Uh, I, I work till five o'clock, so sometimes yeah. I try to sneak it in when I'm not too too busy, and nobody will come in my office. Yeah, and I hope you get a car soon. Uh, I will. Thank you very much, Shecky. Appreciate hey, it. Hey, Ben. Yeah, and uh, Andrew, thank you as usual. Charlie thank Wallace, you. wonderful talking to you. And, uh, and for everybody who tuned in and watched this little thing, I hope you enjoyed it. And hopefully we'll all see you all again next week uh, for this little gathering. Uh, and for the rest of you also, we're on, you know, Monday through Friday, or Tuesday through Friday uh, at 10.30 at GabNet. At anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll wave goodbye at you, okay? And uh, that's it. Bye. 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 Bye.